Greetings. Time for another teardown, and it's another emergency light fitting. I did a disposable LED emergency exit sign a few months ago. This unit is different in that it's an emergency light to provide illumination rather than just signage. And it's also more conventional in that it has engineer replaceable batteries instead of a sealed in set that expects you to throw the whole thing away every few years. This one is an Eterna LED tune spot with a pair of 3 watt LED spotlights for illumination. Normally it would have a cover screwed to the front, but as you can see, that's long gone. It's got a carry handle though, so it can be used as a portable spotlight, not just a wall mounted emergency fitting. In normal operation, the lamps are off with LEDs indicating that it's trickle charging and the two lamps are okay and haven't failed. If the mains fails, the lamps will quickly turn on and remain on until the mains returns or the battery reaches a voltage of about 3.14 volts, at which point it'll turn off. Speaking of the battery, that's a pack made of three nickel cadmium F cells in series, so 3.6 volts at 6 amp hours. That'll be sized so the unit has plenty of runtime, as if it can't keep the light going for three hours, it needs to be replaced. That's the case here, as the centre cell has gone weak, but it's got enough life left in it for doing a little bit of testing at least. There's a little bit of attention to detail in here, in that it's got this little rubber bulb thing. And as the air inside the unit expands and contracts due to heating and cooling, this bulb will allow the air pressure to equalise with the air outside the case without impacting on its IP65 rating. It does have screw holes, but it does also say in the manual that if you use those, you should apply silicone sealant to them once it's fitted. Under the lid of each spotlight, we find these heat sinked LED modules, and the cover can be pried off this as there's a mounting screw actually on the back. Popping that cover off reveals three 1 watt LEDs on a metal back circuit board together with a pair of MEL7135 350 milliamp constant current regulators and a 1K resistor. Presumably having the regulators in the lamp head instead of on the board means that the same board could be used with different lamp wattages without having to redesign or stock different board variants. There's no mention in the regulator's data sheet of temperature sensing, so that's not it. As the regulator is a surface mount devices, it also makes manufacturing the board a lot easier, as that board is single sided with all through hole components. Having it here means you haven't going to mess around with surface mount. The main board looks pretty simple, no bitey switch mode supply here, just a conventional mains transformer and a fuse on the incoming supply. Everything else is low voltage. Here's a close up of that board front and back, with the back image flipped to match. And here are the same images overlaid so you can see how the tracks match up with the components on the top. And of course, where would we be without the schematic? I've measured the transformer secondaries as 6.4 and 4.5 volts, at least under the load is getting here, and I've measured the rectified and smoothed outputs as 6.1 volts for the main supply, plus a 12.8 volt supply that appears to be just used for monitoring the presence of an incoming main supply. I'd have thought that could be done with the main secondary winding, but they've taken a separate winding for it. Who knows? Incidentally, that earth connection goes to the transformer and nowhere else. There's no continuity to the laminations, and there's no continuity to the secondaries. So I suspect there's a screen in there between the primary and secondary, and that's what's getting earthed. Most of the circuit gets power through a chunky 2.2 ohm resistor and a diode. This is what trickle charges the battery. The diode doesn't seem to do an awful lot. I think it just makes sure that the lamp failure LEDs go out if it is running on battery, it's eking out a touch more battery runtime. Each lamp is driven by a pair of 1.5 amp PNP transistors in parallel and has an LED indicator which lights if the lamp is working. That explains the presence of the 1K resistor in the lamp head, as it needs a path through without putting enough current or voltage in to actually light the LEDs in the lamp. It just wants to know that it's there. Those PNP transistors are all turned on by pulling their base voltage down, which is the job of NPN transistor Q1, and that gets turned on with a soft start thanks to capacitor C4 by microcontroller, which is a pretty simple job in here really. The charge light is on unless either the battery voltage goes too high, indicating it's no longer charging or it's been disconnected, or if the mains has failed. The lamp control is on if the mains has failed and the battery voltage is high enough. If it's gone off because the battery is low, it stays off, or at least appears to stay off, even if the battery voltage rises again off load, 
and won't turn on again until the mains has been back at least once. This is something that can be carried out using comparators and a bit of logic, but given how cheap 8-pin microcontrollers are, plus the flexibility of being able to code in turn off or turn on delays, initial boot up action, prevent impulsing when the battery is low and so on, it makes sense to just do it this way. That microcontroller gets powered from a 3 volt regulator and that's your lot. Well, almost your lot. The data sheet for the constant current regulator has this chart showing the output current versus the supply voltage, and it suggests that the battery voltage needs to be around the 4 volt mark in order to get the 2 times 375 milliamps required for a 3 watt output. 2 times because remember each lamp has two regulators in parallel sharing the load. So let's put a voltmeter across the lamp supply and an ammeter in line and see what we get. For this I'm going to use a different battery pack. It's still a 3.6 volt NICAD pack, but it doesn't have any duff cells. Incidentally, these packs are marked up as needing to be replaced every four years. And chances are the cells are still pretty good after that time. So if you've got a battery charger and a D-cell mag light with an LED bulb, they're perfect. Just make sure you leave enough of the solder tag on the positive end of each cell so that the cells can make good contact when they're inside the torch. Okay, we have battery voltage, lamp voltage, lamp current. The voltage here is because it's running through the lamp OK LED. Let's power off and see what happens. Well, that's about 2.1 watts. Now, there will be some losses in the cable, but not that much. This cable is, uh, I think it's four square mil. It's quite chunky cable. And even the short pieces have got going into the terminal block, one and a half square mil. Let's give it half an hour and come back to it. And we're down to 1.68 watts. So it's like in another half an hour. Down to 1.54 watts. Let's give it another half hour. One point four eight. Another half hour, 1.35 watts. Another half an hour, we're down to 1.05 watts. Probably not much left in the tank now. And that's typical, just as the meters went off. As you can see, the battery voltage is climbing back up now but it's not turning the light back on, it's holding it off and it will do that until at least the power comes back. So what have we learned? Well, it doesn't sustain 3 watts per fitting. Fitting might be capable of 3 watts, but it doesn't actually sustain that. But does it really matter? I'm not sure. We can, hear, we can see here the brightness difference at the start and the end of its run. Off camera, I did knock the big light off and there was still plenty of light to see by with this thing, it would, it would have done its job. Obviously the battery would last longer because it's only using a, what's this one, four and a half amp hour cell, I think, does it say? Three, three amp hour pack. And, and the proper pack is six amp hour. So the run time certainly isn't an issue. These meters haven't been calibrated in years. But I did try swapping to the meters over and uh, before I started filming and they did give exactly the same readings between the two. So uh, make of that what you will. Anyway, uh, that's the end of the video. I've not got anything else for you today. Um, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon.